Now let's set the scene for our first story, and it takes place on campus at Anna Hiss Gymnasium. Built in 1931 and originally created as a women's recreational center at UT, Anna Hiss Gymnasium now serves a very different purpose as the hub for robotics activity at the University of Texas with a focus on the future. This technology, this is very exciting for people. People want to learn about it. We want to kind of create researchers, engineers, and educators. They are the most creative members of Texas Robotics because they are the future. They, they, they need to invent the future. In 2019, construction began to renovate Anna Hiss Gymnasium as the new home of Texas Robotics with a goal of uniting robotics efforts at the University of Texas, led by Dr. Peter Stone. When I first got to the university here back in 2002, I was one of only two or three roboticists all across campus. But gradually over the next few years, different departments started hiring people who were getting involved in robotics. We got together, several of us, and decided that it would you know, make sense rather than just having our own robotics labs, our own robotics pockets at different parts of the university to try to band together. Texas Robotics now includes 16 core research labs and faculty, 40 affiliated faculty, and over 150 student researchers. It's a cohesive group that, that's all you know, sort of working together with a single purpose of becoming the best robotics group of people, group of faculty in the world. One of the cool things about Texas Robotics is that not only our diverse group, but also other cross-disciplinary groups are going to be under the one roof. So we can now collaborate easily. New ideas are blossoming out of that. It takes all of us to be able to cover this space of robotics. We're trying to both be full service and go deeply in a couple of areas that we think are the particular growth areas for robotics in the coming years. One of those is human-robot interaction, and the other is long-term autonomy. How do we get robots to be turned on and stay on and operational in a uncertain environment for, for very long periods of time? I've worked a lot in a domain called Robot Soccer, where we're trying to create teams of robots that can play the game of soccer. This requires robots that can walk and move, that can see, that can reason about what it means to be a teammate and an adversary. Really requires integrating all of these aspects of artificial intelligence. All of these aspects of sensing, deciding, and acting come together, and so it puts together all of these components, and there's a very easily stated challenge, problem, which is to try to create a team of robots that can beat the best World Cup soccer soccer team on a real soccer field, and we've set, set ourselves the goal of the year 2050 to try to do that. In addition to artificial intelligence, Texas Robotics focuses on helping humans with everything from surgeries to recovery and rehabilitation. Our mission in the new robotics lab is to design robots that can physically connect with the humans. And the goal of this physical connection would be to enhance human capabilities or help recover some of the human capabilities. We would like to use these robots to improve how workers in factory perform actions so that they can avoid injuries or avoid fatigue. We want to use robots so that astronauts can get exercise they need in space with our robotics technology. And we're also designing robots to improve quality of life for stroke patients who may need physical therapy for long periods of time. Okay, so what you see here is Hussein controlling the hand motion of Hope using brain signals. And now he's trying to close the fingers. This technology can be used to help people with neuromuscular disorders who have a healthy brain but broken muscles to get control of their muscles and be able to move around and do activities of daily living. The focus of my research is on brain-machine interfaces and how people can control robots by modulating directly their brain activity so that they can communicate mental intents rather than physical actions. The main reason to do so is to help people with severe motor disabilities who have lost control of their body. Provide them with assistive devices that will execute the actions that they can't. For example, mobility. They are sitting on a wheelchair and they are controlling the wheelchair to navigate in their environment. Or to reach and grasp objects that they can't because they have lost the, the, the function of the arm. Robots are here to augment us, to help us, not to replace us. Texas Robotics 
has been a quantum change of the way we operate as faculty. It has multiplied tremendously our impact and our ability of bringing together not only all these faculty, but then 200, 300 students that they are constantly collaborating. And this means a massive amount of information, of algorithms, of softwares, of robotic devices that you see around here, that now is uniquely available to them. We're now set up for Texas Robotics to be a leader for years, decades to come, and that a lot of the advances, I think, in the whole field are gonna come from this, from this building.